Hey, Shalom. This is your brother, Yuanathan. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Most High. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekak, Wadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. I want to say Shalom to all the brothers and, of course, the few sisters who are pursuing this truth in sincerity. All right, may the blessing of election be upon your house. Today, we're going to talk about the systematic unraveling of America. Because for the believers, most Christians, most people who believe and say they believe in the scriptures, right? And even some Israelites don't understand that America, this system, the mind frame of these people, does not coincide with the kingdom of heaven. Does not coincide with the most high's plans. So they got to be removed out of the way. Could you imagine, you know, people with, with the, their foundation of understanding and their moral compasses of what they perceive to be right or wrong. Coexisting. In the kingdom of heaven. With people who they understand what they're submitting to right. There would, there would be this. There would be resentment. There would be this. Uh, and you know the, the nations once they're put in captivity. When the Lord returns. There's going to be you know. So, but they're going to understand. The old. These, the, everything was created for these people's sake. There are people that know the truth. But here, these people want to be willing to change and convert the righteous. They always will be, you know, because they mock the Lord here. They have a great disdain for him. The scriptures tell you that. When you go to Romans 1, we talk about this vibration, this sodomitic vibration that's being pushed in the earth. Romans 1, it tells you when someone's given over to that spirit, man, they become hater. They become a hater of God. And these people are exactly that. They're haters of God, man. And along with you can read down those characteristics. And we've been going to this to that chapter a lot lately. Uh, but when you go down to the bottom of Romans 1, it gives you a laundry list of characteristics that come along with that vibration, with being in opposition to the Most High. And it holds true when you read it. Okay, but... uh. Let's first, let's, uh, let's go to Revelation 11 and 8. Okay, we just popped the bottle with that. It's Revelation 11 and 8. It says, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Okay, because our people are spiritually dead. We we're completely disconnected from our heritage like it talks about in uh, Jeremiah, the 17th chapter in the fourth verse. Completely separated, but divine intervention had it to where, you know, the wisdom returned unto us. You know, that our knowledge of ourself was increased and knowledge in general in the earth has been increased. Okay, uh, pursuing in Daniel 12 and 4. Okay, but a small remnant of us, you know, we, we, we've come up out of that dead state. All right, Revelation 11 and 8 again. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt because sodomy is pushed here. Okay, on a high level. And America is going to be burned just like Sodom was. Okay, and in Egypt, Sodom and Egypt, because this is the place where this is the last place we were held uh, captive, and we're still captive. Okay, where also our Lord was crucified, and our Lord was crucified here because His way has been casted down. The way of righteousness has been casted down here in America. And America is the epicenter, or the, the corporation that the elites use to cast down the Lord's way all over the earth. Okay. All right, now let's uh, link um, America to that future uh, kingdom that will be ruled by Edom, okay? Because the people that will be in rulership when the Lord return is Esau Edom. We know that pursuant to Second Ezra, the sixth chapter and the ninth verse, for Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. And in that scripture, when, you, when it says end of the world, it's talking about the end of an age, end of a reign or a rulership or a kingdom, okay? And Jacob, the Israelites, is the beginning of it that follow us. So when the Lord returns, the last other nation that's going to be that was going to be in rulership prophesied to be would be Esau Edom. So he's still here today because the Lord hasn't returned yet. Okay, um, let's go to Lamentations, uh, the, the fourth chapter and the 21st verse. Okay, it reads, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. 
Edom is going to be exposed for that profane man that he is. The cup of judgment is going to pass through unto him. All right, verse 22. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. So when is the punishment of our iniquity? And I mentioned this in the last video. When is the punishment for our iniquity truly up? Well, when you go to Revelation 22 in the third verse, it tells you, and then there shall be no more curse upon the establishment of the kingdom of heaven. We're taken up into those chariots. We're given those new bodies. You know, the curse is, is, is completely lifted off of us. Now, through Jacob's shovel, the Lord is going to protect the elect. Okay. But our, our people that are going to be saved, they're still going to be going. They're going to be catching hell, the most gruesome hell they ever caught. Okay. So, you know, we're talking about Zion, you know, their punishment being up. And then we're talking about Esau, Edom. In conjunction, it's like, okay, there, Esau's getting judged. Um, you know, our, our people are, you know, being pulled up out of that state of, you know, perpetual curses. What time is this talking about? What's going on here? You know what I'm saying? So, Lamentations 4 and 22 again. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. Okay? So it's going to be their turn to actually pay for all the wickedness they've done. And this goes way back. Because in, in Genesis, it says that uh, no one wants to touch Cain. The Lord's going to have to deal with Cain. And Esau is the reincarnation of Cain. Okay? Let me pull this piece up up there really quick. Alright. So now I want to... Uh, I got this little chart here. It talks about the seven stages of a kingdom. And I did this lesson... Uh, a while back I brought this out But I want to bring it out again Where All kingdoms go through They broke it down They put it in seven stages And you know when you, when you try to line it up It holds true Okay you got the age of power pioneers Okay which for America Would be you know When Columbus and the, the ships Started getting sent out here You know They, they just so called discovered the land Which they did and they even needed the bible to get over here Right. And they brought Hebrew interpreters because they knew the people that were already over here because the ten tribes, okay, they sailed over here after the Assyrian captivity. Now, the age of pioneers, the outburst, right? And then you have the age of conquest, which they came over here and they started to conquer, man. The, the, the spirit was on them to conquer. Because all twelve tribes had to be oppressed together in the last days. So they conquered the ten tribes that we were brought over later in the captivity. And all of all the tribes were, were shipped around the earth being sold in the uh, captivity. But pri primarily, the bulk of Israel will be in captivity here in the north country. Okay? So they conquered from the, the east coast all the way to the west coast. They conquered, you know, South America. They, they just were, they went around conquering. The spirit was on them to do that. Now... You have the age of commerce. After they conquered all the people, what? They began to make money and merchandise of the people and of the land. Okay? So that took place for, for a while. Okay? And then you have the age of affluence. Now they're reaping the benefits of selling the people and all of these things. So, they, 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 you know, America became the... the, what, the the, the, the land of milk and honey, so to speak, or the place where, you know, you, you could become whoever you wanted to become. Okay, then the age of intellect, and at stage five, which is uh, the age of intellect is stage five, that's where nations begin to take a downturn. Because even when Esau was doing all that wickedness, you know, everything revolved around, you know, pretty much the Lord's way. The Lord was still being uplifted, but around stage five, the age of intellect, when people become free thinkers and they start questioning, you know, what righteousness is, 
that's when nations take a downturn. And this is where America began to uh, go left. And you can say about what we, with all these different movements, especially feminism, and when they start pushing these different uh, agendas on the minds of the people, that's when you can see America really start to take a downturn. So in the scriptures, it talks about, uh, you know, ancient Rome being the last great kingdom that would rule. And we know America is an extension of Rome. This is the revised Roman Empire, right? So a lot of the things that America is doing uh, is a direct parallel with some of the things that ancient Rome did. In particular, in ancient Rome and in ancient Egypt, actually, because we know this is spiritual Egypt as well. We went through that at the beginning of the lesson. When the Israelites were called or woken up to the fact that the Lord was going to deliver them out of those kingdoms. The powers that be would try to stamp out this notion or the spirit of the people, uh, which to them was seen as a rebellion. What we're doing right now is just high treason. And that's gonna play out in the physical here soon. Uh, their kingdoms always went down at that time as our people started to stand up for righteousness. The kingdom started to decline rapidly um rome had infighting just as the greeks just as america is, is having and that's getting ready to boil over uh legally in uh, the roman empire the government became less about the people and more about controlling the minds of the people so draconian laws went out and came into play same as you see here and, and that's getting ready to escalate as well like i said uh, let's read it um let's go get it here Revelation 13 and 11, it says, And I beheld another beast come up out of the earth, and he had two horns and spake. He had two horns like a lamb, and spake as a dragon. Okay, America. All right. The, 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 the corporation that sits at the, at the top of the beast, the main nation that the elites use. Okay, they're getting ready to be that country which is the the tip of the spear, so to speak, to push these international uh, draconian measures under the guise of safety for the people when it's really just about the control. Okay, socially, the Roman uh, Empire began to uh, begin offering people uh, what, what, uh, those, uh, bread and circus. So it's going to come here to where they're trying to do the universal income. see these parallels they, they, they we could go on all day yeah then those bread and circus uh the bread and circus program really started to take place after the punic wars like with 264 be to like 146 bce all right So they were, that was a dis, extremely destructive to the minds of the people. Are, the people were distracted in the empire. The same way the people are distracted here with celebrity gossip and the sports and all that. You're not wicked if you watch sports, but you got to understand, man, you're supposed to be a watcher of the signs of the times. So there's things that are always happening that are lining up with prophecy that you should be, you know, concerned with. Because all the, the, the bread and circus, that's a distraction. The sports, the celebrity gossip, the stuff they put on the news half the time. It's a, you know, it's a sleight of hand for something else. All right. That's so that, that's just to keep the mob under control. Militarily, what did the Romans do? They spread their military thin. And they were attacked on all sides. Just like it's prophesied for America to be, you know, attacked. And even for their own, uh, their allies to turn on them. Their, America has a military bases uh, in in majority of countries all over the world, and nations have a resentment for America because of the, you know the policies and the things that they push. All right, the, the underhand tactics they use to undermine people's governments and, and uh, cultural morals, right? There's a great resentment out there. 
So you read about in the scriptures how this man's allies are going to turn on him. It makes sense. You know, every every kingdom has a cycle that it goes through. And uh, let's go to Second Ezra 9 and 5 and back that up. It says, for like is all that is made in the world at the beginning and an end. The end is manifest. The end of America is manifest. We know that by the signs and the prophecies that the Lord has given us. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. So we're supposed to be looking for those effects and signs that the Lord gave us about this, this future Babylon, this mystery Babylon, the daughter of Babylon, right? And how it would fall. Okay? The may, the, we know that the, the, the last and final thing that they would be doing is they would be trying to put a M-A-R-K or a mark. Okay? A physical mark, pursuing Revelation 13, 16, in the people. And we see internationally, things are being geared towards that. We see, you know, the dollar being threatened. We, we see, you know, the stage being set for a new system to be pushed on the people. And when things escalate, you know, that's going to be the put, hey, for, for, you know, you to function society, this is how money is moving now, da, 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 da. We see it. It's actually very plain to see, regardless of how many people are, don't want that to be the case. Okay, verse 7, second is 9 and 7. And everyone that shall be saved shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, right? Faith is truly the only way we can please him. But if you do have faith, if someone truly has faith, that's going to that's gonna put a battery in their back to rehearse the works, to rehearse the righteous acts. And by faith where you have believed, okay? So, you know, the Lord is not a man and he shall lie. These prophecies have to happen. They have to be fulfilled before he comes back. Uh, second Ezra, the fourth chapter in 37 says, By measure hath he measured the times, and by number hath he numbered the times. And he doth not move nor stir them until the said measure be fulfilled. So things go, you know, one phase at a time. So, you know, as far as those seven stages that a kingdom goes through, uh, like we said, that, that, that stage five, when people start to lean on their own and people start to lean on their own understanding and say, well, you know, it's, it's this and it could be that and uh, gender. Also, that's another thing that, that was going down in ancient Rome. Gender became a debate. It wasn't black and white anymore. All right. So in the midst of, you know, after the affluence happens and they reaped all the benefits of their conquest, commerce and pioneering, you know, that that people started the free thinkers start to come out and then decadence happens and like that quote goes what uh tough times create strong men strong men create good times good times create weak men weak men create bad times all right so that decadence you know within that phase weak men have been created by then and now they're the ones you know, in the offices making the decisions and an age of decline and collapse ensues. And we're in the seventh stage. Again, you know, this, this place is in its completion. All right, so just a quick lesson. We're really just a summary recap of the lesson I did a while back. Um, I think I, I got to go find the class, which class it was specifically if you want to, a more in-detail um, look at those seven stages, but um, I know Apostle Tahar did one as well, and I land back off to his, off the elders' uh, lesson. So, with that being said, man, Lord willing, it was edifying. I want to give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, and I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders, a great millstone, and I want to say shalom to all the brothers, and of course, the few sisters who are pursuing this truth. In sincerity, all right? May the blessing of election be upon your house. Shalom.